Hi hey guys, Nick Klein with Isoform LLC, and today we're going to make this. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial um, at a friend's request to create this kind of a thing uh, using X particles in PyroCluster. Um, X particles is a really fantastic uh, particle simulator for Cinema 4D, if you don't know. And PyroCluster, of course, is a great way to ender, uh, render volumetric gases and, and smoke and, and things like that That's uh, that comes with Cinema 4D. So let's get started. Let me delete these uh, leftover colliders real quick. We're going to add those back in in a second, and I'll talk about them. Um, the scene I've got right now is just a sphere passing over a cylinder and a three-point light rig. So let's render that real quick, show you what we're starting with. That's it, right? Pretty simple. Um, and f for now, I'm just going to turn off the sphere so we can talk about, we can focus on the particle system. If you've got X particles installed, you'll see X particles show up here in your menu. And we're just going to click System, which is going to add this system uh, object to your project hierarchy and then down here under commands we're going to hit add basic setup that's how I like to get started with X particle systems and uh, let's select that emitter let's bring it up into our scene so we can take a gander and it looks like we've got a square and it's emitting particles along the Z which is how uh, X, that's your that's your default emitter um, but let's change it to a circle because that's what we want and let's change it to the positive Y because that's what we want and we're going to move this down into our cylinder and uh, let's make it a little bit bigger so we can so it looks like it's coming out of that cylinder and let's let's hit play and see what we got okay not too shabby um, but it's very uniform right like any particle uh, system default particle system and so let's start adding some noise to the mix um, for for the purpose of this tutorial and this little project I used um, rather than emitting all frames we're gonna have kind of a burst of particles starting at frame 0 and ending at frame Oh, we'll call it frame 70. And rather than having the particles live uh, the entire time that they're on screen or the duration of the timeline, we're going to have them start to die around frame, uh, let's call it frame 120. And let's add a little variation then in there. And we're going to add variation to just about all these parameters because there's variation in nature, and that's a good thing. And we want to capture that variation in our animations to make them look as natural as possible. So we're just going to add a little variation to everything except radius, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So now let's see what we've got here. It's already looking a little bit more organic, looking looking not too shabby, right? Um, I think the particles are living a little longer than we need, so let's reduce that. Let's let's have them live to frame 90, and so the ones that are born first are going to start to die off um, uh, as this passes frame frame 90, right? Uh, right now they're off screen when they're dying, but that's okay. We'll We'll, de we'll deal with that in a little bit. Um, still really uniform, so we're going to add a little noise. And the way to do that with X particles is just, just click on the system object in your hierarchy, and under Add Objects and Modifiers, we're going to add Turbulence Modifier. Okay, and so now let's hit Play and see what we got. All right, it's already looking a little gassy. It's kind of a strong effect, and uh, the, we're getting really big wisps. We want smaller wisps. Um, so let's let's reduce the scale to maybe I don't know like 80 something 70 or 80 something let's reduce the strength down to like maybe three let's try that and see what we got okay it's looking a little gassy kind of nice not, not too shabby right there um, but I think we're gonna decrease the scale even a little farther there we go that's looking looking pretty good nice kind of subtle effect for now uh, but we're gonna add some more to this in, in a few minutes okay so um, let's turn our sphere back on and see what happens as our sphere passes through these particles. The answer is nothing, right? Because we don't have any colliders on on anything. Uh, so with X particles, all you do is you bring up this menu system here nor as normal, and you're going to add a collider tag, just like you would with any other physics system in Cinema, except you're adding an X particles tag. Let's do that with the tube as well. So we're going to add X particles tags collider. All right, and now we're going to see this sphere hit these particles and just knock them, knock them to heck. We got an explosion happening here. And since we're trying to make a gas, we don't really want that. We want, we want uh, the gas to behave more like a gas, and gases don't really bounce a whole bunch. Uh, at the molecular level, they, they bounce a whole bunch, but we're not interested in that right now. Uh, we want to make it look like gas. And so let's try this again. And now they're not bouncing, but they're still kind of traveling in the vector that, that's imparted to them from the sphere object. Uh, which is okay. I mean, you, you might expect that a little bit with some gas, but that's not really what we want. So let's add a little scatter to this as well. Let's add a little variation to everything. We're going to add another noise to kind of counteract some of that effect and to make this look a little more organic. And the noise we're going to add is another turbulence 
noise, but we're going to change the noise type from standard to curl. And if I hit play right now, you're going to notice that curl really takes over. Curl is kind of a kind of a beast. It likes to dominate all the other things in your scene. Um, and fortunately, curl comes with this blend modifier here, uh, or this blend parameter. And so right now, it's taking 80% of all the modifiers and everything that's going on with these particles. Modifier specifically curl is dominating those and taking 80% of the location of the particle responsibility is falling to curl We're going to reduce that to like 1% and it seems really low, but but you'll still see the effect of curl very strongly And the reason is because as these things are curling They're imparting new vectors the curl is imparting a new vector to each one of these particles And so you've got two turbulences working on these along with that that, um, that curl modifier, and so you're getting some really erratic behavior. So we're gonna do a couple of things to fix that. The first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna reduce the add parameter down to maybe 6%, okay? An add parameter is sort of a blending mode like you have in Photoshop or, or um, you know After Effects, and it's a multiplier for the blend. And so rather than having a full add, we're gonna reduce that quite a bit, and already it's looking a lot like like smoke, it's looking pretty good, but we're gonna reduce the strength just a little bit, and we're gonna reduce the scale just a little bit, and let's see how this goes. Okay, looking pretty dang good, looking like a gas already, okay? So we're just gonna leave it at that for now. Uh, you can tweak these parameters for ages, easily spending a day, you know, um, getting it to behave just like you want it to behave, like a gas. Um, but for now, let's just uh, let's watch it one more time, make sure it's looking good. Yeah, I think that's good. So let's render this thing. Right now, if I hit the render button, let's get a few of those particles on screen, you're not going to see anything, right? Um, let me delete these extra materials down here. And we'll start, we'll just go, we'll take it from the top. Okay, the first thing we need to add here, in a normal particle, X particle system, is you'd use an X particles material. You'd add that to the emitter, and uh, you're going to get these flat sprites that are gonna render. Okay, that's just the default. Um, X particles comes with some really fantastic defaults in their material setting. You could render these cool spheres. Um, and you could render, the, the beauty of X particles, one of, the, one of the beautiful things about X particles is it's a really efficient system. So if we added a zero to our birth rate, uh, so we're rendering 10,000 particles of frame right now. Um, and it's rendering it like a, like a champ, no problem at all. And if we hit the render button, it renders those those three D looking spheres really easy as well, and those spheres are actually reacting to the light source in the scene. Um, super impressive, right? Love X particles. That's one of the reasons. Uh, but we don't want that. That doesn't help us right now, right? What we really want is we want gas. And X particles material is great, but it's not going to give us a gaseous a gaseous effect. We want to use. Fortunately, we're Cinema 4D users, so we want to use Pyrocluster. Um, and Pyrocluster uses thinking particles, so now we've got to somehow get from the X particle system we've set up to Pyrocluster. Well, fortunately for us, X particles also has this little toggle down here. If you scroll down on the emissions tab on your emitter, you'll see a thinking particles header. And there's a little uh, toggle there that says generate thinking particles. Well, that sounds like what we need, so let's hit that. All right, and you'll notice now that uh, when we render or when we hit play, in the editor, our little green dots have turned into crosses, which for those of you who are familiar with thinking particles is exactly what we want to see. That means we're now rendering thinking particles. But the thinking particles don't have a material, so we're still not rendering anything in our scene when we hit the render button. Now, to get to get to the next step, what we really need to do is set up a pyro cluster um, scene, just like you normally would with pyro cluster. So if you're familiar with pyro cluster, you have to add an environment object. You have to create a pyro cluster volume tracer and apply that to your environment object. You've got to create a pyro cluster material, but where do we add that pyro cluster material? If we add it to our emitter object, we've got everything that we, we think we need. We were rendering thinking particles for crying out loud. We've got our pyro cluster scene set up, but if I hit the render button, I still don't see anything. And the reason is, and some of you who are familiar with thinking particles are probably shouting, you've got to use particle geometry to get it to render, and you're absolutely correct. We've got to add something to this system to bridge the gap between X particles and thinking particles and the particle cluster renderer. And that, that bridge 
is under simulate thinking particles particle geometry and if you add the material to the particle geometry tag and hit render we've done it okay and you can tell because the render just pretty much shuts down it starts to choke uh, and there are a couple reasons for that and a couple of things we can do to address that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just reduce the number of particles we're emitting uh, we're rendering a lot of particles and I don't think we need all these because we're using a volumetric um, sprite render pyro cluster and it takes up some takes up a lot of space which is a good thing but let's leave that at 400 for now we could reduce that and that would obviously increase or decrease the render times but there's a better way the easiest thing to do is inside your volume tracer rather than render mode set to crispy which is the default set it to user and we're going to set this to 20. This is the world step size. This is the resolution of the volume tracer. We're going to set that to 20, which means we're decreasing resolution of the volume tracer. But you'll notice our scene renders heck of a lot faster, right? Fantastic. So now we're rendering smoke with X particles being driven by X particles. Beautiful thing. Still doesn't look exactly like we want. You could use this. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It might work for you. But I really prefer to make some changes to this X particles material. Uh, I like to use, rather than under settings, I like to check steam and it's going to ask you if you really want to convert parameters and you're going to say, heck yes I do. And we're going to go to noise and we're going to change the noise type from fractal to gaseous. That gives us a really nice noise type. So let's hit the render again, see what we got. Okay, it's looking like steam, it's looking like vapor, um, looking like some gas you might see in an engine, you know, if you're going to do an engine visualization. Yeah. It's good stuff. Okay, very cool. And so you can imagine how that's going to look in the actual animation. It's going to hit that, and you're going to push some things around, and you're going to hit the render button. Let's render it one more time. Looking, looking pretty good. But I think we want to have some, um, some shadows. Now, this is going to increase render time a whole bunch. Uh, but I want to show you. So I'm not going to do it in real time during the tutorial. But you're going to add cast shadows and self shadows. And that's going to add some really nice volume um, to that steam. And then you can also increase the emitter, uh, the, the birth rate a little bit. We'll do that right here for the purposes of the tutorial, just so you can see. I'm not, I didn't check the, the, um, the shadowing, so it's still not going to look super realistic. It's going to look a little flat, uh, but you'll get the idea. And, uh, and when you check those, you're going to, you're going to see much bigger render times, but it's going to be worth it. Um, if render speed is really important, uh, just, just don't check them. Use fewer particles, and you'll still end up with a really nice particle simulation, looking like smoke and steam and that kind of thing. Okay, um, that's it. That's basically it. One thing I did want to mention, though, is is that there's a correlation between the pyro cluster material size and the radius of your particles and X particles, and that correlation is your collider. So if you look right now, when this sphere hits these particles, they're really close to that sphere when they start to react. That's because the radius of our X particles is only five centimeters. And if you look at the radius of our um, of our material here, it's a hundred centimeters. So that means that even though this material is 100 centimeters, the sprite that's rendering for each of these particles is 100 centimeters wide, the collider is only five centimeters wide. So you're gonna end up with some colliders. And I've got, I actually have some in the video that I showed you at the beginning. So let's look at that again. And um, you're gonna end up with some clipping, I mean, not colliders. So right there, if you look at, the, if you look at that clip right here, as the sphere collides with some of those particles, you'll notice that they clip, they go, they look like they're going into the sphere. After I made this video, I didn't even notice it when I first rendered it, right? Because it looked great in the editor. But um, what that is, is that means that the collider is smaller than the sprite in the material. Well, the easy fix for that is to reduce the size of your sprite in your material, unless you really like the size of the sprite in your material, in which case all you have to do is increase the size of your collider in the emitter. And so you just go into radius and you're just going to increase let's call that 50 it's going to be enormous um, and that would really reduce the clipping a whole bunch so now if we if we hit this again notice that our colliders are acting a little funny um, inside the generator and they're they're the emitter and they're um, hitting this sphere really far away so the sphere doesn't even have to get that close to them and boom they're getting pushed out of the way so that's really not great, right? So you find, have to find a happy medium between the sphere size. Let's go down to oh, 50 for this. Let's go down to maybe 20 for this. A happy medium between the colliders that you're using for your radius of your particles and the size of your, um, of your sprite that you're generating for pyrocluster. 
So I just kind of wanted to mention that, um, something that I discovered after I made that video and uh, wanted to prevent you from, from making the same mistake I did. Fortunately for us, that smaller pyro cluster sprite uh, still looks fantastic, looks really good. Right. And to get a little more denser steam, uh, we could, of course, just increase the number of particles. We could increase the density of your material editor. Lots of tweaks you can do to get the exact look you're looking for. Hope this was really helpful. Uh, feel free to, uh, to hunt me down on Facebook or leave a comment in the messages on, on YouTube here, and, uh, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.